something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21 here, and this is a very, very, very fast unboxing. And I'm just doing this because I'm actually excited. I am legitimately excited because after years and years and years of wanting something like this, I finally pulled the trigger. This right here is a FLIR 1 infrared camera. So this is actually a thermal imaging camera for Android. It uses USB-C. And this has the ability to do thermal imaging. But instead of just being a fairly crappy, you know, device, so th this actually has some really cool technology in it. So looking at the picture, you can see on the box right here, it's got two cameras in it, a visible camera and an infrared camera. And not to go too much into the science behind it because I could geek out all day on this stuff, but basically it takes the thermal imaging sensor, which is a microbolometer, which is a microelectronics device that takes incoming heat and physically measures it as opposed to most thermal imaging cameras, which uh, work differently. And I'll, I'll maybe I'll make a video about that at another point. But the point of this is, is that it gives you a, well, a fairly low resolution thermal sensor, but then it combines it with a higher resolution visible sensor to create some very cool, interesting, uh, high resolution um, thermal images. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this up and play around with it and then come back and show you what this thing can do. All right, so I just wanted to share this with you because it looks like FLIR maybe stole some Apple product designers or, or packaging designers or something. Be careful like that. Okay, but let's take a look at this. So you got this cool box. They tried to make this a premium unboxing experience, which I find hilarious because I'm not buying the box, I'm buying the camera. But they want you to know that you're buying a premium product. So I open up this cool thing, see the heat. So we got marketing working for us right now. And then ta-da, here is the actual camera system. So this clips onto the bottom of my phone. So it just uses, so it uses the phone to drive. And um, it's kind of cool because this is able to rotate. Actually, what is this adjustment? So I got a little adjustment knob here. I need to figure out what that does. Probably focus on the camera. All right, but it's got the two camera array. Nice little FLIR logo on it. So I got so excited with this thing, I didn't even go beneath this. So there's a lot more left in this box. Let's go ahead and pull it open. And let's see. So I see two compartments right here. Let's look at the big one first. And it looks like we have a nice carrying case for this thing. Wow, this is actually, this is pretty nice. Um, let's see if I can unzip one handed. Okay, so it's got a nice FLIR logo on the little zipper tag. And Okay, so it's got a compartment here for the actual camera and for probably a charging cable. So let's see what's on the other side here. Okay, let's open this up. And yep, charging cable. So USB-C charging. This is a cool camera because it has a, an internal battery so it can run itself without driving down your, uh, your phone battery, which is a pretty cool feature to have. So yep, that's pretty much all that's in the box pretty much all you need. All right, so this is cool. So I wanna go ahead and let the camera charge up and then I'll come back and give you some footage of it actually in operation. And that will also give me a few moments to read the manual and the quick start guide. Let's go ahead and just see what's in here. Oh, a nice thank you from the company. That's cool. Okay, and here is the getting started guide. So let me go ahead and read this and I'll come back. Okay guys, so quite a bit of time has passed since I did the additional unboxing and I've had a chance to use this thing in a ton of different situations. And I can honestly say that I love it. I absolutely positively love it. This thing has come in handy in so many different situations. Now, I'm a weird person, so I have some very weird use cases, but for everything from um, inspecting the brakes on my car after a drive, looking for hot spots, for, um, looking at my 3D printers, making sure that my print beds are uniformly uh, uniformly heated, to uh, looking at the house, to doing an energy survey, looking for heat leaks, um, just and just running around with the family and having fun with it. Um, 
There are so many use cases for an infrared camera like this. Oh, and oh, by the way, for all my RC uses too, after, uh, you know, after beating the snot out of one of my cars um, and uh, ins inspecting it, looking at the temperatures of the speed controller and the motor and making sure that nothing is about to explode. You know, so there's tons of awesome uses and there's a lot of fun uses. So this device is not cheap. Um, I'll put in the current pricing. Uh, I got it from Amazon. So if you click the affiliate link that's inside the description, uh, that actually helps me out a little bit. You pay the same price, but it gives me a little bit of a kickback from Amazon as a little token of appreciation. But if you check out the current pricing, I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not that bad. It's actually reasonably affordable. And there's a few different versions of it. Um, but I mean, there's one for Apple and there's one for Android. But the difference really is that right here, you've got a USB-C port and I figured out this little knob here. This adjusts the height of the USB port so that uh, when you plug it up into your mobile device, it has a good solid seat um, because the depth of USB ports varies from device to device. So they have an app called FLIR One, actually they have a couple different apps, but you, you can use her to with the device. I use the FLIR One app. So you go into this and it gives you a prompt to plug in your device. You wanna make sure that this is powered on by itself first. So you plug it in, I mean, you power it on, take it to orange indicator light, then you plug it in here. And this is where I'm saying you adjust to get the appropriate, um, the appropriate height to fit, fit your device well. And voila, you see it's starting to load. But voila, you see, here we go. Here you've got my laptop computer. And if you look at this computer in visible light, you know, it's a laptop computer. But here looking at this in infrared, you can clearly see the visible image is being used to make an outline. Oh, there you go. I got my thermal shadow in the background of the screen, but then you have the visible camera is being used to make an outline of what's on the picture, just so that you can get context and reference in your imagery. So this is the Passmark Performance Benchmark. So let's go ahead and crank this sucker. So obviously on the visible light imagery, you just see it running benchmarks. But here on the infrared imagery, we will hopefully start to see this sucker really heat up. And you can see on the infrared, the CPU area of the computer is starting to get pretty warm. And this edge here, where you have the exhaust vent is getting nice and toasty. So that's up to 70, that's up to almost 90 degrees. Okay, well, 95, let's take a look at the other side. Out. So the CPU area is getting pretty better. That's 82. Let's get the side over here. We have another vent. That guy is almost 90. Let's take a look at the back of it. This is where the intake is. So that's getting warm. You can actually see a thermal reflection off a countertop. Interesting. Okay, so the temperature of the CPU is actually, well, I can't say the actual CPU temperature. The temperature over the CPU looks like it's hovering about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This is running using the balanced power profile. So it's not getting as hot as it could be because it's trying to conserve battery life a little bit. Here on the exhaust port, we're at just under 90 degrees. And it's actually kind of hard to zoom in on this thing because it's so small. Yeah, there we go, 93 degrees. Okay, so this is so this is in a less stressing test right now. 
What's actually kind of cool is inside this laptop, you have heat pipes that take the heat from where the processor lives, which is right around here, and pipe it out to heat exchangers on either side. And then that sends the heat to the outside for cooling. And one little thing to notice about the imagery is that the visible imagery and the infrared are slightly offset from each other. There's an adjustment that you can use to align the two pictures on top of each other, but that alignment changes based upon the distance of what you're looking at. So if you're looking at something near, you have to align it a little differently than something that's far away. So if you're really trying to get precision imagery, then that's a big deal for what I'm doing for this application. It's not that big a deal. So I'm cool with it. Okay. It looks like this was a little bit more stressing on the CPU because it went up a couple degrees. Now we're into the 3D test. This is where things should ramp up quite a bit. Okay, it looks like we're already up to 87 degrees Fahrenheit over the cooler area. So I'm gonna guess that we're probably close to 100 degrees coming out over here. Yeah. 100, 100. Yeah, under 101 degrees. Oh, this is kind of cool. Random side note, GoPros get pretty hot too. This GoPro is recording in 2.7K. You can see that it's cruising at about 92 degrees. So yeah, GoPros are toasty. Okay, so this is, each of these graphic tests is more and more stressing. So we're at almost 90 degrees over the CPU, GPU area here. Okay, and let's take a look at what the cooler out X the temperature oh I saw 106 degrees okay so the purpose of this test is to run dynamic simulations that stress out <coughs> the GPU the graphical processing unit which is basically just a large math pipeline so not that you really care about this, but GPUs process what they call array math. So basically you're using the same mathematical, you're applying the same mathematical operations to a large collection of numbers at the same time. So in order to do that effectively, you need a different architecture than what's in a general purpose processor. That's why computers now have GPUs and CPUs. CPUs are better at doing single strings of calculations, like basically operating on small sets of numbers at one time. GPUs are very good at repeated operations against large data sets. That's the reason why they use GPUs for cryptocurrency, for example, for crypto mining, even though the bottom's falling out of that. But yeah, you can definitely see how the entire unit has warmed up from the end of the test. Yeah, we're at just over 90 degrees for the surface. And let's take a look what this exit outlet is right now. Okay, it looks like it actually cooled down a little bit. It's up 100, 102, which is expected. 
I saw 103. Okay, so it's still over 100 degrees on the outlet side. Okay. So now I have my pass mark score. My computer is not very fast in the grand scheme of things, but it works for me. All right, guys. So like I said, I'm really impressed by this camera. I, I think that it's definitely worth the money, you know, and it, again, if you have a specific reason for this, this could be a very good tool, but it can also be a really good toy too. I mean, at this price, Yes, it is a little bit expensive, but if you need something like this for a professional application, this is a bargain. This is dirt cheap. And it's also at the point where if you just want something cool to play with, it's not that big a deal compared to some of the other toys that some of us end up with. So overall, I give this thing a nine out of 10. Uh, the only really complaints I have about it are the fact that the um, because of how the focal length of the two different cameras line up you get this displacement well it's not really the focal length it's the fact that they're displaced one versus the other so the system at least this version of it isn't smart enough to try to find correlations and line up the two images right on top of each other you you have to manually do that that's not that big a deal but it can be a little bit annoying if you're going back and forth between measuring things that are up close versus far away you know having to realign the cameras all the time but that's really kind of a nitpick the quality of the imagery itself is pretty good the field of view is a little narrow so it's not a it's not a very wide angle lens so you have to get really uh, could, for example if i when i was doing my thermal survey of my house I had to go really far back in order to get the entire house into the image because it's very narrow. But that's kind of a trade-off because if you're up close to things, you don't want a very wide angle. And so for example, like looking at the imagery from this computer right now, you know, on the laptop, this is about where you want to have it. So I get it. You know, it's, um, you, you're, you have some limitations with the optics, but for the price, I, I'm yeah I can't really complain too much now there's much more expensive versions of this device as well if you need something that has higher resolution because this particular device I'll put it in this the actual resolution specs um, so it's not the highest resolution thermal infrared camera which is part of the reason why having the visual imagery augmented uh, is very very useful for this but you can step up to the higher resolution versions and I'll link those uh, uh, down in the description as well if that's more of what you're looking for. But for me, for the types of applications that I'm doing, this is fine. This is great. I, I, I really like this. All right, guys, our house only one sign out. Remember mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix, and do it all over again. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Castle Creations fan page, uh, RC Physics Sandbox. You know, I'm all over the place on social media. You know how to find me. Okay, guys. So. If you are looking for a great toy that can also be a great tool, this little FLIR infrared camera is definitely worth the it's definitely worth the investment. All right, guys, our health 21 signing out. Peace. Well, I can say definitively in infrared, you look hot.